Thank you, Bishop Strickland. And, you know, one of the points you talk about, we've done this before, about the deposit of faith uh, given to us from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to safeguard that. Isn't it true? I remember maybe two years ago, I got a copy of what a bishop would repeat when he becomes a bishop of the Catholic Church. And one of the things you sign off on, so to speak, and say amen, is that you're going to pass on the deposit of faith. Am I on to something? Yeah, and the actual words used in the ordination of a bishop or consecration of a bishop is you promise to guard the deposit of faith. And that's a promise that every single bishop makes, from the Bishop of Rome all the way to the most recently ordained bishop or auxiliary bishop. To be a bishop is to take make that promise, among other promises. Wow. And I think it's one of the most important promises. And it, it reminds us we're talking about divine revelation. Yes. This is not a human invention. No synod or committee brought this all about. Yes, through history, bishops have gathered to discern how we best understand yeah. what God has revealed to us. Mm -hmm. But it's not where they just invented out of whole cloth or reshaped things according to the opinion of the day. <clears throat> I think one of the things that we need to remember as Catholics mm -hmm. in the 21st century is that we believe that divine truth has been revealed to us ultimately and most gloriously by his son, Jesus Christ. Amen. He is revelation incarnate. Yep. That's, he's the word incarnate. Um, and we believe that God has shown us the way to return to the Father. That's what the church is based on. It's not a human organization that has decided, has voted in what we're going to do. And we need to remember that. Yeah. And any process, synodal or whatever they want to call it, that is not always going back to the Word of God, going back to the magisterium of history, mm -hmm. going back to what the church has taught since the very beginning, whether it's talking about Mary or yeah. the sacraments or moral life mm -hmm. or whatever the topic, we go back to Christ, we go back to the fullness of Scripture, Old and New Testament, we go back to those touchstones to see where we, we, and where we go, where we're coming from, yeah. what the future holds. And um, I, again, I'm reminded of that gospel that we reflected on as we began this hour, is we are called to, the church is called to be Mary. Yeah. Mary, and certainly the, the Blessed Virgin Mary is the greatest model for us, but I'm speaking of Mary that's there in the gospel the one sitting at the Lord's feet and listening to him teach. Yeah. That's the stance of the church from the first century to the 21st century until the world ends. The church's job is to sit at the feet of the Lord and listen. And like I said earlier, and I believe, I have to say, this yeah. synod is is a Martha synod that yeah. is, is all worried about the, and Martha was a saint as well as Mary, yeah. but Martha is instructed clearly by the Lord that Mary has chosen the better part and it won't be taken away from her. And so I think there's a lot of clarity and hope in those words for every faithful Catholic. Yeah, the synod may proclaim a lot, but if it's not according to Christ, just say, no, thank you, politely, but clearly say, no, thank you. And it won't be taken away from us. I mean, we can take Christ's pledge to Mary as the pledge to all of us. The truth will not be taken away from us because Christ is the truth. Amen. Certainly, St. Martha is, is called in her activity to spend a little more time at the feet of the Lord. Mm -hmm. The Lord doesn't say 
that what Martha's doing isn't necessary. Mm -hmm. He just says that Mary has chosen the better part. And that's what the church needs to be about. And I would say again, especially the ordained and the vowed religious. I mean, we were talking, we won't get into a lot of details, but there are a lot of religious communities of women that are threatened right now. And sadly, like some of the canceled priests, it seems to be the most faithful religious women's religious communities that are threatened with being shut down. Those women need to know that Mary and the Christ's words to Mary are Christ's words to them. They have chosen the better part, lives of contemplation and prayer, and it won't be taken from them. Maybe in external ways. I mean, some of them might say, well, Bishop, I hate to tell you, but it's been taken away from us. But the, the reality of what they're doing, choosing to have a life sitting at the feet of the Lord in deep contemplation and prayer, no power on earth can take that away from them. If they, their institutions may, and they may have, their life may look very different, but their hearts, where their hearts are, cannot be taken away from them. And I hope that they can be strengthened by good shepherds Amen. to know, believe that as they face being cast aside. 